Hey, thanks for tuning in to your Arsenal Advisor. Uh, this video is going to be about disassembly, cleaning, and reassembly of the Glock type pistols. So disassembly of the Glock pistol is, is in this manner. The firing pin has to be to the rear, so just to illustrate from a cleared firearm, you do a dry fire to get it to that state. So you put the um, back of the pistol in between your thumb and forefinger and you, you squeeze a little bit so that the um, barrel unlocks just a little bit and you pull the slide lock down. You can grip it from both sides and then you slide the slide assembly forward and then now you have the frame and you apply some pressure on the back of the recoil spring assembly take that out and then you can pull pull the barrel out of the slide So occasionally, every time, not every time you shoot, but occasionally if you, the magazines become very dirty, you can disassemble and clean them. So disassembly, you can use the Glock Armors tool, uh, which is basically like a pin for working on the, the punches. But you can insert it into this little area where you have the magazine spring or base plate of the, uh, well this is the base plate and this is I guess uh, the spring follower within the magazine. So you put the, um, the pin into the, um, the base and then you pull towards the front of the magazine until you hear it snap and then it helps get the uh, base plate to overcome this, this little knob um, on either side or on both sides of the magazine to where you can then just pull it the rest of the way. Um, being careful to keep the, the spring under control. And you can pull that straight out into its uh, component pieces. But that's just something to do um, uh, every so often. It's it's not recommended that you have to clean the magazines that, that often, but obviously it depends on how dirty they get and what you, what you do with the magazines. So for magazine reassembly, make sure you um, line up the the follower, front of the follower and the front of the magazine. Actually the back of the magazine is where it has all the numbers and the viewports. And you see the shape of the, uh, the spring follower. I'm not sure if that's correct terminology, but it... it, it follows the same shape as the bottom of the magazine. You can kind of see it's got a little slanted corner on the front. Hold that in place and then position the um, the base plate of the magazine in the front and then you just make sure that the grooves are lined up and you just push it on and then it's back together. Stop. All right. So now that the, the Glock, the, the pistol's been disassembled for cleaning, we can go ahead and do that. I like to use rubber gloves because there's all kinds of carbon. Uh, I like to just, just makes cleaning the hands a lot that much easier afterwards. Um, I have dirty rags, moderately dirty, some kind of clean. I have Q-tips. I have one of these tools. It helps follow follow certain grooves like there's a groove right in where the slide rails run inside the frame have the um, cleaning rod where you can affix uh, patches um, and this is the original uh, bore brush I got with this particular Glock it's been deformed over the years um, so you can use that probably switch I might use another bronze brush that's not um, that's more round so, anyway, so what I do is I take one of the, uh, I guess the dirtier rag, 
kind of wipe everything down I can with just some you know, finger pressure and kind of see as carbon before now it's a little more shiny um, removes a lot of a lot of material um, I'll run it inside the, the frame See a little bit. I have I use grease on the inside of the uh, slide assembly. Kind of see some of that. Um, I'll just do that. I like to um, use the Q-tips without really any solvent. I just kind of rub in between the, the different parts of these surfaces inside the frame. You can see some of the, the carbons coming off. I'll lift up the, um, the slide catch and try to uh, get as much of the uh, carbon off from there as well. I may pull the trigger forward to get to this other, other spot here. What I'll do is I'll take a patch, kind of rub it around the inside near the top of the magazine well. I usually use like a, like a nail on my finger to try to get up against the um, corners of the magazine well. And then kind of wipe down to the inside. I'll wipe up in the front of the uh, frame. Work it towards the back here. So now I'll take a Q-tip. And I use I use CLP a lot. Let me shake it. Yeah, CLP on the Q-tip. So on some of the metal areas, I'll try to see if there's any additional carbon. I use a little little bit of a, a solvent in here. Well, I caution, I guess, the use of solvent. Um, I think it's got to be careful what you put on certain firearms. I think this is safe, safe for plastics, but I'll wipe a lot of that off using the, uh, just switch to the, the cleaner side. Sometimes I also try to work a patch behind the trigger bar here to try to get any found behind that. Might do that later. So I'll use this tool and a patch. Try to run that under the um, the slide rails. The Q-tip didn't really fit in there very well. You can also use a pipe cleaner or something just to get any old grease or oil that has some, some carbon in it so you can see some carbon coming off on it. Um, the rest of that there you can kind of just go along with your finger or Q-tip. So for brevity's sake of this video, I'd probably work on this a little, little longer uh, than what you just saw I guess basically in real time but it's put it back together probably fine just like it is but I continue to look for other carbon in nooks and crannies, so I'm going to put that aside. Um, I can use, this isn't too dirty of a patch, so I'll, I'll run run this cleaner around, around the outside of the barrel. Just looking for more more carbon that I didn't get before with the, uh, with the, uh, the rag. Got another Q-tip. Some CLP. I'll run that inside of uh, this locking area, the locking block part. There's some surfaces where the recoil assembly goes into this, like a semicircle. It's this circular part of the uh, recoil spring. And then there's this area straight out of that where the um, slide lock. actuator 
touches upon. This is the, the slide lock from, from viewed from inside the, the uh, frame. When you disassemble the farm, this is what you're pulling down to allow the slide to move forward. And that, that, that shape, I think it fits up into here behind the recoil spring. I'll go around the uh, back of the chamber here. So meanwhile, uh, clean it a little bit off, I'll, I'll take a patch. Put some uh, CLP on both sides, and I'll run it through the back of the chamber, around a little bit, and then go into the barrel, and then I'll uh, push it through to the other end, and take it off. Generally, I like to move from the chamber towards the muzzle. Some some firearms I may work it back and forth before I lead the muzzle. Um, especially with uh, things that are uh, plastic and cloth, I'm usually not too worried about um, scraping the barrel or other parts of it. But generally, you want to go from chamber to muzzle. And it's you see a little bit of the the, the fouling coming off on on the patch. I'm just looking down the bore myself so I can kind of see what it looks like. It seems to be pretty clean. Give me a pause. Right, so I got a, uh, a bronze brush. I'll just put a little CLP on that. In case I drip, I usually try to drip it over top of one of my darker rags. So I can kind of just run the, uh, the brush through it. Times and get a clean patch. And kind of see if anything more has dislo been dislodged by the brush. And it's coming off. It's come off a little more, a little more dark than than the other patch. So I'm going to add a little bit more CLP to the patch. Now cleaning barrels in the military, they recommend you do it three days in a row because some of the, the, the CLP, I guess it depends on what kind of products you use some of the uh, the carbon can continue to come out of the come out of the metal so it's good to go in and get it out for about three days in a row but um, you, you can do you can just see what that's like on your own firearms see so if you clean them off the first day maybe you know which is could be a lot of time spent you may not need to do it but that's just something to think about so I've done that I've brushed it a little bit um, Got a lot of the fouling out, um, but depending on where they're, well, this is a Glock. You're not supposed to shoot lead, lead, lead projectiles through it. It's a polyagonal barrel. Um, rifle barrels, you can shoot lead through, but lead and copper, they all have different rates of fouling. Um, so that's something to think about. Uh, so I'm doing this pretty minimally. I can save time. So I'll take some of the CLP on a patch or the inside of the slide and actually while I have the slide I'll get the outside of it so a lot of a lot of carbon gets on the outside too uh, I don't have to work too much on that because usually near the end when I got everything back together I'll go back over the outside So I'll take another Q-tip. I'll go down the corners of the inside of the slide. 
and inside the surfaces in the back as well. Take a dry one. Not a lot of fouling gets in the back behind the firing pin, but I'll, I'll just try to kind of dust it out a little bit with a dry patch. So I'll take a little bit, put some uh, CLP on the edge of that um, patch, and I'll take this this tool and run it down the slide. You can see come up with uh, some carbon that gets on the slide. So I'll run the other side. The other side is a little easier to stay in the track because you don't have the uh, slide catch release in there. So the part is the um, back of the slide where the, uh, the back of the, uh, you know, the uh, projectile where the firing pin comes out, I guess you call it the breech face. Um, so I'll get that wet. I'll get too wet because you don't want a lot of that getting down into the uh, firing pin track or our firing pin area. I'm just using this brush. I'm not using a lot of pressure. I'm trying to see if I can help that push that into the uh, face of the breech there. And after a while, you get all these dirty patches. I'll just throw them in the trash, get them out of the way. So right around the, the ejector, you want to make sure there's nothing inside inside here. Just clean that up. Now here's a firing pin block, and that prevents the, the easy um, application of cleaning tools. So you have to make sure not to forget and press that down. And uh, try to wipe a lot of carbon is like right gathering right in front of that firing pin block. Okay, now I'm just swabbing some of the excess cleaner out. Get a little bit where the uh, barrel protrudes to the front of the slide. Now look for some other oil right where the um, recoil assembly fits into the front of the slide. Okay. Uh, and then for the uh, recoil spring, sometimes I'll take like a pipe cleaner and just run it down, a little bit of cleaner on it. And after this, it should be ready to uh, re-lubricate. I was just looking at one of the, the manuals earlier, and he just explained using using some uh, some oil. So CLP can be used in that in that manner. I'll just put some on a Q-tip. Now there's an area in the back here where you see the trigger bar slides underneath this piece of metal. Um, that's a good place to have oil. Um, it's described as the, the the rear right side of the frame where the, the trigger bar moves right here. Um, so then, then I re-lubricate the outside of the uh, barrel. And if I'm not going to use a farm for a while, I'll also put some some of this lubricant, which is also a preservative, uh, inside the barrel. So I usually just put a little coat of film of a uh, little all around the barrel. I'll put it somewhere so it doesn't touch a lot of other things. Um, I'll put some more CLP on a Q-tip. I'll apply it to the slide rails. Might 
clean off little excesses on the rails. With the patch. Let's make sure I got all of them. Then I'll run Q-tip down the inside. Just like we did for cleaning use this this groove tool apply a little oil back into the slide rail groove looks like that could use some more cleaning then you put the barrel back in. And you put the um, recoil assembly back in, being careful to put it into the semicircular part in the bottom of the barrel. And then you place the slide assembly near the front slide rails the frame make sure they go into the grooves and you pull it back you only need to pull it back a little bit pull that further you cock the, the firearm it's okay but I got the um, slide back on um, check and make sure it's in the empty chamber I like to drop the uh, firing pin and I wipe off the excess oils, cleaning products. Got a lot of that junk on the um, gloves as well, so I can't tell how how dry the uh, firearm is. I want to make sure get anything that impedes the use of the firearm or your grip on it. And then run that back and forth a few times. And that's basically what I do to clean the uh, the Glock. Um, like I was saying earlier, I might spend more time looking for more of those areas of carbon, like we just saw a little bit that was left on the rails. But uh, that's basically how you get to like a lot of the areas. Uh, if you need to do more, you can take it apart, but I wouldn't recommend doing that too often. It's really not necessary. Uh, this firearm's working pretty good for. 28 years um, and I'm not shooting it all the time so maybe it already hasn't had a lot of wear but it's been doing doing very well for me okay so we went down to a pretty quick rundown of um you know, cleaning disassembly cleaning reassembling uh, the pistol um, I didn't show cleaning the magazine um, basically just had to clean it and then not leave any oil, oil residues. Some of the oil residues can gather dirt and, and you know maybe cause a uh, malfunction some way or, or have your magazines maybe not work for you. But it's also something you don't do very often or it's not recommended to do it every time you shoot necessarily. Um, so anyway, uh, I, I did go back and do some more cleaning because uh, there were some areas like always chase uh, I guess all the nooks and crannies just trying to get as much carbon that you can reach out of the uh, the farm you know to you know help out with its uh, longevity and you know trying to prevent uh, rust and the absorption of moisture into some of the crud and carbon that, that gets on the firearms so um, and that's really the other thing is you want to spend more than uh, I would say in 10 15 minutes cleaning a firearm because there's, there's enough gunk all, all in it um, that it takes a while so it's just uh, you know it's a good time um, you want to spend some time uh, doing it and then you'll learn how to get to all the different surfaces in a particular firearm um, but it's a, what I just gave here is kind of a I guess an example limited to you know this Glock but a lot of it can be used on other firearms basically just going from one end to the other getting all the um getting to all the surfaces so so thanks again for watching and uh, if you need any other contact information, just uh, hang on a few seconds more. Look for the, uh, the end title page. All right, hey, thanks again.